In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to start an insurance agency from start to finish and every single step it takes along the way. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Nick Saka. I started my insurance agency in 2017 as a captive insurance agency from scratch and in five years, we were able to grow to a $5 million book of business before acquiring another $5 million book, taking us to about $10 million in total agency premium. We've done all that in just five years. On my YouTube channel, I talk all things entrepreneurship, insurance, and self-development. Be sure to follow me on my social media platforms. And if you wanna know everything that I did to grow my insurance agency from start to, from zero to five million, check the link in the description. I just recently came out with a course on our entire blueprint and everything we've done. So I hope that brings you value. Now let's get started. All right, so first and foremost, I am very passionate about this industry. I love the insurance industry. This industry changed my life. Prior to this, I was a banker for seven years and working my way up the corporate ladder and I always knew I wanted to start my own business and I aligned perfectly. I mean, I stumbled across to, uh, to opening an Allstate insurance office and I haven't looked back since and I have just loved this, this journey. I mean, I, there's nothing better than selling a product that everyone needs by law and it's residual, right? Like it's gonna pay you every six month, months as long as a customer renews. And it's just a very awesome industry. So I'll start with that. You are interested in the right industry. I think that this is gonna be a great move for you if you move forward. But the very first decision I think you have to make when starting as in the insurance industry is, do I want to open an independent insurance office or a captive insurance office? And obviously, my whole experience in the last several years has been a captive insurance agency, but I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the pros and cons to both. One of the pros of being a captive insurance agency is it is set up for you in a way, right? Like Allstate's logo is on the front of my door. I use their software. I'm tied, I'm exclusive with just this one company. Uh, but everything else within the office is mine, like the desks, the lease, the everything here is mine. So it is my own business and I own the asset that I can sell someday. I do know that with other insurance agencies, like I believe with State Farm, you don't own the asset, so you're unable to sell it, which is a detriment in my opinion, but uh, there are still some other perks with companies like that that make it worth it. Now, working with a captive insurance company, one of the benefits is that you're only working with one company. So you only need to know the guidelines for one company. It's pretty niche down to one product and it makes it easy in a sense. It's almost like it's like you have training wheels, but the opportunity and the ability to earn is just as good as the independent route. One of the cons of a captive insurance agency is that you can only sell one insurance company. So if a customer wants to up and leave you, you're unable to, you're unable to find them a different carrier, which is, it's, it's a negative, right? Like, because you get to see people leave you and there's nothing you can do about it sometimes. So that's one of the negatives. Another con I would say is that you don't have as much control over your business, like the hours, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's still the company's guidelines that you must follow, right? And so that part of the captive side is a detriment in my opinion because you're not in total control of your book, right, of your business. And so that to me is a negative. Let's talk about the pros on the independent side, the brokerage side where you have multiple carriers to choose from, definitely a positive. You have more control of your business, definitely a positive. Independent agents can also partner with aggregators, clusters, and agency networks to give them access to other options. One of the cons of going independent is that many agents feel intimidated by not having the same exact quite support as going captive, making it harder to reach the goals and to create a profitable business. Another con is getting appointed with certain carriers can be difficult if you don't already have an established book of business. It can also be pretty challenging to learn the ins and outs of multiple carriers as you're growing your insurance agency, whereas on the captive side, you're only tied to one and only have to learn about one. Another con is that it can be financially challenging to take an independent office up and going as you're getting it started because of the cost and the business expenses. Whereas in a captive agency sometimes can have certain contracts that pay a lot of agents a lot of money up front to incentivize them to build their business fast and to build it strong. 
So again, whether you decide to go independent or captive is a lot more research I believe you need to do on your own to find out what would be the best fit for you. In my opinion and in my experience, all I've ever known is the captive side, so it's hard for me to speak about the independent side. Although I will tell you, I know a lot of captive agents that eventually go independent because they seek more control of their business. However, if in the right situation, like my captive company has been amazing for me and I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I think that I can build just as lucrative of a business as the majority of independent agents. The only downside is that if I lose a customer, I don't have the ability to retain them by pulling a different carrier. So for whatever that's worth, I hope you will make the right decision in choosing whether going independent or captive is best for you. Once you make the decision to go independent or captive, then you need to work on getting your insurance licenses. Because I don't think you should get do any of the other steps that I'm about to give you without knowing if you're gonna go independent or captive. Now you're gonna to need to get your insurance licenses and your business licenses. For my insurance licenses, I needed to get my property and casualty and my life and health. And then eventually, my captive company made me get my Series 6 and 63, which in, in 2022 is no longer a requirement, although things may change. Getting my business license was pretty simple. Then I went on to get my uh, EIN number uh, and I filed it as an S corporation. Of course, I think you're gonna wanna talk to a CPA to figure out what is best for you. To get your business license, you're gonna have to go to your municipality's uh, website to be able to apply for your business license. Make sure you check the county's uh, requirements as well because they may have a requirement where you need to get a license for the county as well. Yes, they nickel and dime us. <laughs> Once you get your insurance licenses and your business licenses in place and your EIN number, now you need to look at the requirements for the insurance company that you're going to start. Now, capital requirements for any captive insurance agency can be anywhere from 25000 to 100000 from what I have seen. In my experience, I got lucky, and in 2016, it only required $25,000 worth of capital, which again, I was blessed and lucky enough to have a 401k that I was able to cash out to be able to start that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. However, on the independent side, I have been told that you can join an agency network or a cluster and start as low as $5,000 to start your insurance agency. So on the independent side, you may have a little bit more flexibility if you don't have the capital to go captive. Regardless though, you are gonna want enough capital to be able to fund your business because this is going to take some money to get off the ground. So whether that's you have the capital or whether you apply for business credit cards and or lines of credit, you are gonna need that as you grow your insurance agency, whether you're captive or independent. Let's talk about legal structuring, okay? I know some people that start as sole proprietorships, but I just don't agree with that because of the risk that you're putting on yourself individually and personally. Uh, I started as an S corporation. You might wanna talk to your accountant or CPA as far as where, how you should structure your business. There are pros and cons to each structure and that's completely up to you. I'm not a tax professional, so I would highly recommend you talk to a professional. Once you have that in order, you're likely going to need to find a physical location um, or it's 2022 now and a lot of companies are offering you the ability to work from home and to build your insurance agency from home. And I would tell you that if that is an option, I would probably choose that. In my uh, five years, I have been, uh, uh, I didn't have the choice to work from home. We have had to have physical storefront locations uh, for all three of my offices and I am cool with it. The only advice I would say is location does not matter. Save on your monthly lease expense and use that money to invest more into uh, employees and invest more into marketing to grow your insurance office. I do not believe that having a good location where you're paying four or five grand a month is worth it when you know, you're banking on people to walk in and get insurance quotes. I just don't think it's a great model. All of my leases are under 1600, thank you God, and that has worked out very well for us. Now you're likely going to need hiring, you're gonna need staffing, and 
The best way to go about this, guys, is to be posting on your social medias. I th I'm a huge advocate for branding yourself and, and promoting yourself and letting people know what you're up to because the organic reach, the people that you know, you know people that know people that are likely to know good people. And hopefully they can refer you people to come work for your insurance office. Uh, I think that's the lowest hanging fruit. Otherwise, of course, you know, I started out with using Indeed. I found a couple of good people early on from Craigslist. Now, I I don't think Craigslist is that great anymore, uh, but there are a few diamonds in the rough that I was able to find in my early years. Uh, however, um, it just depends. You know, I think reach out to your personal circles first, promote on social media. Indeed, there is a resume finder tool that you can pay a hundred bucks a month for to search for uh, people that have certain keywords in their resume. I highly recommend it. Uh, you can, if you're looking for people that worked at, you know, Chick-fil-A, then you can put, uh, send me resumes of people that have uh, worked at Chick-fil-A or send me resumes of people that have worked for State Farm. And by doing that, it, it allows you to find people with tailored experience. And so that's a cool tool from Indeed. And then of course, my buddy Dave Williams runs a company called Team Hired, uh, who if you have the capital for that, he will find you a ton of candidates. It's just a matter of coughing up that initial investment. A couple of other things that you're going to need to start your insurance agency are insurances that, that will protect you and your business. The first one is errors and omissions insurance. This is to protect you and your staff from any errors that you may cause that will, that will mess up one of your customer's policies or really truthfully anything um, error related in your business. The second policy that you're going to need is what I call uh, a business owner's policy. It's not what I call, but it's called a business owner's policy, also known as a BOP. And that covers you for general liability, contents within your business in case somebody breaks in, steals all your stuff, uh, et cetera. A third policy that you're going to need is workers' compensation. This is in case you want you or your employees get hurt on the job. It will protect you and your business uh, from them getting injured. And the cool thing about some of those policies is, is that depending on the timeline, you may be able to write those for yourself and get the commissions on it. So those are some of the insurance policies that you will need to start your business. Well, this industry is hard, okay? It's gonna take a while for you to build this thing up. And for me, it took about at least two years before I was in the green and making really good money and able to use that money to reinvest and to continue to reinvest to grow this agency. It's gonna come down to mentors. You know, Get resourceful, find the right people to learn from. There are so many resources on YouTube. There are so many resources on uh, podcasts and books that you can read. And there are people that throw events. My, my mentor, Craig Wiggins, was somebody that was very instrumental in my development and growing my insurance agencies. And so he has a training platform that can train your team on how to become better at sales, right? And so, get around the right people, go to masterminds, go to events, invest in your team's development, take them to events, and that will help you grow this insurance agency. Now, some of this might sound foreign to you because you're here to find out how do I start an insurance agency, and hopefully I was able to give you a couple tips with that today. Now, the follow-up question I'm sure you're all wondering is when can I expect to be profitable? Because I think a lot of people, unfortunately, have a microwave mentality, and this business is not get rich quick. It's actually get rich very, very slow, right? I'm five years in and I've made a lot of great money with this business, but I continue to reinvest it and I'm playing the long game because I want to build a successful business, right? Where people are taken care of, right? My employees are taken care of, my clients are taken care of, and that's what I'm here for. And so uh, when can you expect to be profitable? I would say minimum two to three years if you're giving it 1,000%. But even as you start to experience profits, reinvest that, okay? Do it over the long haul. Give this thing five years minimum because if you're just, I just want to kind of start an insurance agency. Like, you know, I just kind of, I heard they make good money. Or if you're, I've seen a lot of agencies, agents come and go and fail in my five years. And I don't want you to be one of them. So, Look, guys, if you got some value, do me a favor, subscribe for all videos, entrepreneurship, insurance, and self-development, and uh, follow me on my social media platforms. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Peace.